What's going on everybody? In this video, we're going to talk about how to brumate your tegus in the winter. Selling in the billions each year, Rainbow Mealworms is your one-stop shop for all your insect needs. Their quality feeders and A-plus customer service keep me coming back to support the health and growth of all of our animals. Visit them today at rainbowmealworms.net to place your order. All right, y'all. Now, I should take a quick second, of course, just to recognize that different people have different ways of doing things. But the way that I'm using over here is my preferred method of care when it comes to brew mating our tag use. Okay, now you really need to bear with me on the mess in here, guys. When you operate a reptile business out of your house, it is very difficult to keep things organized. So this is a complete mess just so that our house doesn't have to be. Here are our brew mating tag use, and I'll show you a couple right now. First, let's discuss discuss the temperatures of when tegus go into brumation. So point number one, tegus will start to go into brumation whenever they feel like it, but usually when winter is approaching and that's going to be different for different people at different times of the country. Even over here, I have some tegus that like to start brumating in October and I have other tegus that don't go down until November, but they all go down eventually as the winter approaches. Now the benefit to living in Arizona is that our weather for brumation is pretty good to just leave the tegus outside until the temperature drops below 50 degrees. Once the temperature is consistently below 50 degrees, that's when I like to pull them in. This year, I did a little experimentation with our juveniles, subadults, and adults. They were out there until the weather was even 40 degrees, and they were perfectly fine. They would still wake up every now and then, come out, sunbathe a little, go back in. But once those temperatures started dropping below 40 degrees, that's when I brought them in. Now, you don't have to push the envelope like I did. That was a little bit of an experiment for me because I know that they live rampantly in Florida and Florida gets down into the 30s. But just personally, I wouldn't want my tegus out there when it's in the 30 degrees. So I pull them in typically between 45 degrees to 50 degrees. If you're in Arizona is my recommendation. Now, leading up to the point of brumation, you want to start to slow down their feeding, their food, until it is zero before you officially put them down. So for example, once I start noticing my October girl that goes into brumation, she starts to slow down her feeding around September as she's coming out less and less. I look for her poos, I make sure she's pooing and the poo looks normal. She'll still come out and bask until October, but I won't feed her for all of September. That's a two to four week period where she's not eating at all. The rest of my tegus that go down in November, I will stop feeding them for all of October. So they'll still be out, they'll still be active a little bit, but their metabolism and their activity level is starting to dramatically slow down. The reason you don't want any poop in their system is because that could wind up becoming septic, which could wind up causing an infection or in worst cases, death for the animals if they go into brumation and do not have access to sun, UV rays, and heat to help them digest their food. Now, if you're brumating your tegus indoors and you have an indoor cage, you would just want to simulate lowering the heat more and more and more until eventually you cut it off completely. Now you can leave the UV light on for 12 hours on, 12 hours off periods, or you could completely kill the lights and that tag is just going to go into brumation. It might come out every once in a while looking for some sun. And at that point you could choose to turn the lights on for it that day or you could choose not to. That's okay, either way is all right. These tegus are meant to brumate in the wild for four to six months sometimes without proper digestion and sunlight and regular routine. So just keep that in mind, these are pretty sturdy animals, but if you wanna give it some sun when it comes out for basking, give it sun, but don't give it heat. If you start to give it heat, it might start to wake up. And if you don't want it to wake up just yet, then it might wake up when its brumation season is not fully completed. Now, some people ask, is there a benefit to brumation? It's often said that if males and females don't brumate in their first couple years of growth, that they will not become good breeders. I don't know if this is myth. I don't know if this is fable. Maybe some of my more tegu experienced breeders could chime in in the chat. That seems really, really odd to me. But regardless, some people try to keep their tegus awake in the first season. And a matter of fact, if it doesn't harm them on the breeding side, I think it's actually better 
for a little Tegu to stay awake through its first brumation season instead of going to sleep. This is because little Tegus are a little bit more sensitive to life and thriving. And if you have a new owner that's kind of unfamiliar with how to take care of Tegus, they might give it food right before brumation. They might be keeping the lights on and off at weird periods of time. It might throw the Tegu off and the Tegu might wind up not thriving and unfortunately passing away. I've seen this happen with a lot of new Tegu owners. Ideally, if you could just keep the tegu awake and act as if there's no brumation season that would be best however some tegus will still automatically brumate themselves so if you want to keep it simple and leave all the lights on and everything normal through brumation you could absolutely do that if you want to simulate the cooling down period what you'll want to do is start lowering the temperature and also lowering the amount of artificial sunlight exposure and activity levels of the animal. This will encourage it to fully go into brumation and not stop its brumation midway. All right, let's show some brumating tegus now. This is our big boy Red. As you can see, he is happily sleeping here, the cute little guy. He's got a nice little heart or Superman symbol on the back of his neck there, looking real cool. Now the first year of brumation, I actually brumated these guys in a popular substrate called straw but straw was a little bit too dusty I never got around to trying hay which some people recommended Bermuda hay which is a little less dusty but straw definitely did not work it began to give the tegus a respiratory infection towards the middle to end of their brumation cycle I had to pull them out early try to get them as much daily sun as possible it was a gigantic mess now thankfully tegus immune systems are so good and they perfectly heal themselves right when they come out of brumation with the hot Arizona sun but now for the last two seasons I've brumated my tegus in towels I'll throw a couple thick towels in there sometimes they'll bury in them it also absorbs any poo or pee that they might happen to poo or pee out while they're in there it's usually pee you won't usually see poo because of our earlier discussion about depleting their digestive system of all food for a four-week period before they go into brumation but in the off chance that there's just a little bit of food left in their gut but sometimes they will poo it out right in the tub. All right, so as you can see right here, there's two juvenile tegus that are brumating. You can see one of us giving us the little eye right here saying, hey, what are you doing? I'm supposed to be sleeping, but that's pretty cool. Sometimes they will wake up a little bit when you open the tub, but for the most part, they will stay asleep. You can see these guys are resting really nice. No poo, no urates in there. I try to brumate tegus of the same size together. It doesn't really matter if they are male or female. From what I can tell, there's a lot of experienced breeders that do brumate males together. I don't know if that would be my number one choice because I've never done it. But for the most part, tegus are very communal species. They do tend to live and thrive together very well. And that tends to carry over even into brumation. Sometimes in the wild, you'll find a hundred of them underneath one cave or one log or something like that. And of course, you're gonna have your mixed sexes in there of male, female. You'll also have mixed sizes in there, but I like to brumate tegus that are the same size. Here you can see one of our adult female red tegus named Blush. She has some really nice like crystal blue coloring on her head, but she's named Blush for the kind of speckly red light pattern that she has going on her back. Female red tegus will be lighter than male red tegus. You can see compared to the adult male in the beginning of this video, he was very, very saturated with color. Most females will be a little bit less saturated, but you can see she's doing perfectly fine. Her towels are clean, no poo, no urates. I really don't recommend waking them up in the middle of brumation. So if it's a four month period, maybe two months in, check on everybody, make sure nobody has a respiratory infection, no one's drooling from the mouth, there's nothing abnormal or crazy going on. And if everything's good, just keep them locked away, keep them in the dark. Eventually, when it gets close to springtime, you'll start to hear them scratching at the tub more. And that's when you can start to begin to let them out and start to wake them up a little bit. We're going to put hours outside when the temperatures start to increase to 50 degrees at nights. And then what they'll do is they'll keep in a semi-brumation state while they're outside in their dens. But they will come out every once in a while and start getting some sun, start getting some water, 
and kind of going through the cycles of life again. But for the most part, when a tegu is brew mating, it just wants to sleep. And so if you just leave it alone, that is the best thing to do. If you wake it up multiple times in the middle of brumation, that could wind up throwing off the tegu cycle and it could wind up trying to wake up in the tub while you still have it in there for two months and it's trying to get its metabolism going and that could just cause issues. So disturbing them as little as possible is definitely recommended. Just check on them a couple times, make sure there's no issues. Okay, now things are starting to warm up around here. It's starting to get back into the 80 degree days. As soon as the nights are consistently above 50 degrees again, all of these guys are gonna go back outside where they can have the capability to bask in the sun, get some rays, drink a little water, and most likely they will not fully wake up for us here until about April, but they're slowly gonna start coming out and drinking water and getting their activity levels back up. And if you're breeding tegus, they'll immediately start breeding in April for us here in Arizona once they're fully, fully awake. Maybe even a little bit earlier, depending on how early you put them out. Last year, for example, in 2022, the temperatures at night were not consistently above 50 degrees, until I think about mid to late March. We had a really cold winter last year. So when I took the tegus out of brumation, it was already late March, early April, and those girls were ready to go. As soon as they came out of brumation, they were already eating within the first couple of weeks. I usually give them two to three weeks on their own first, and then I introduce them into groups. Sometimes people wake them up together into groups of males and females. You have the choice of doing either way. I don't think it's gonna hurt as long as you observe your tegus, make sure nobody's aggressive towards each other and there's no injuries that are happening, you'll be perfectly fine. But I kind of missed the cycle of one of my girls last year because I waited too long to introduce the male to her. The male was breeding to two separate females. So fresh out of brumation, he was with the first female for a couple weeks. Then I put him with the second female and she might've already been a little bit later in her season. And we wound up not getting a full clutch from her because I just don't think she had enough time with the boy. So if you only have one male, you actually might want to consider waking up the male and the females together and just letting them cohab together if the cage is big enough and if they get along and that way the male can breed both of them at the same time if you only have one male. Now we do have more than one male over here, but I only had one male for that particular black and white project. So at nighttime in this garage, in the winter, it gets down only as low as about 54 degrees, even if it's into the 30s or 20s outside. Now part of that might be because I do have an insulated garage, but in general, the sun is gonna warm up your garage and it's gonna hold this area a lot warmer in general overnight than the outdoor temperatures. Now your garage might be different, so definitely take some time to manage it with temperature control. But I know for a fact our garage is perfect for our tag use because in the winter time, it stays about 54 in here overnight and it gets to a high of about 65 to 70 during the day. Now it's starting to go a lot higher now because the days are warming up, but I'm not ready to let the tegus outside yet because the nights are still below 50. I usually keep this garage closed at all times. There are some air holes in here for the tegus to breathe. There's four air holes in each one of these cages. So technically, you don't ever have to open these up during the three to four month brumation cycle that your tegus are going through. However, if you want to let them out a couple times during brumation, put them in their outdoor cage or put them in an indoor cage and just give them a little bit of sun, a little bit of warmth, a little bit of water, you're perfectly fine to do that. It's just food you wanna stay away from. You don't wanna give them any food until brumation is fully over. Once brumation is over, it's no holds bar. These guys are gung ho for the food once again. So we'll say goodnight to these guys. We'll shut the light off and they will continue their brumation. So what'd you guys think about this video? I know brumation is one of the craziest, most worrisome topics for tegu owners. It was for me. What you want to do is ask a couple experienced breeders and keepers that have been doing this a long time, what their routine is for brumation. Take all of that knowledge, data, and research that you've gathered from all these people and start applying bits and pieces of it where you feel like is right for you in your situation. If something works, don't change it. If something's not working or you're encountering issues like I was with the respiratory infections, change it. I can't tell you enough, the world of reptiles is so much about observation. Observing your animals 
and seeing what's working and not working. It's more about observation than it is about specific care. There's general care guidelines, but when it comes to specific care, what's gonna work for you in your specific neighborhood, in your specific house, in your specific state, in your specific situation, when it comes to specific care, the only person that can give you specific care is you. Even in Arizona, I keep my tegus differently than other people keep their tegus. It's all about specificity. Try to say that five times fast. Specificity, specificity, I can't even do it. But anyway, guys, thank you for being here in this video. I appreciate you guys staying for the next video. Wow, look at our growth lately. What some awesome, awesome growth we are having. And that's all because of you guys. Thank you so much for liking, sharing, commenting, subscribing. And so I'll see you in the next video. Until then, have a geeky gecko. Great day. Peace.